Hi, my name's DJ Clark and I'm here in Tunis, in Tunisia, on the Reporting Change WordPress Photo Multimedia Workshop. We're here to make a video for the Connected Learning and I'm here with Matt Ford, one of my fellow trainers on this workshop. And mm -hmm. we've talked so far about basic equipment, about audio equipment and then about video equipment. But of course, the, the editing equipment and the computer that you use is also really important. Yeah, this is where the magic happens. This is where you build your story. Okay. So you can spend a lot of money on the equipment, but if you forget to invest in the computer, you end up, everything sort of falls apart. So you have to sort of balance whatever resources you've got to spend on this across computer equipment, software, and also the video equipment. Absolutely. So... Um, for computers, let's start with what are the basics. When you're thinking about buying a computer for editing video, what are the things that you should consider? Uh, you're going to want a decent processor and a lot of RAM. I mean, depending on what software you're using, you're going to want to look into what the minimum requirements are, and then you should probably double double it when it comes to RAM or sometimes even triple it. Right. So what I do when I'm buying a computer mm -hmm. is often think, okay, what is the the most amount of RAM I can put in this mm -hmm. um, and what is the fastest processor I can get because those two things I know are going to make a big difference. But also nowadays there's a choice between solid state hard drives and spinning hard drives, the old type of hard drive. Mm -hmm. what, are, what are the benefits of the solid state hard drive? Well, the solid state, yeah, there's no moving parts. So the, the, the risk of it you know, being damaged or failing is, is a little less. And it's also going to be a little bit faster. Now, they tend to be a little smaller in size, so the amount of stuff you can put on it. But you know, I only ever keep one project at a time actually on my laptop. The rest, right. I put it all on external drives, which I use a lot of. So your advice would be is go for the solid state rather than the larger spinning hard drive mm -hmm. and then get some additional hard drives that you can plug in. Now, there's various ways of plugging them in. What are the options right now? For, for external storage? Sure, yeah. Yeah, so I use, when I'm out on a shoot, I always have multiple portables, and I'm a little backup crazy. When I'm out on a shoot, I you know bring enough cards so I don't have to erase them on a shoot, you know, and then I'll, I'll put a version of the project on my actual computer, and then I'll usually have two drives, and I'll do a backup of the project on both of those. Okay. Because drives fail. It does happen. Um, they, they fail, they drop, they get broken, you know, they might get damaged, they might fall in water, you know, and that's your livelihood. If you go out and you spend all the money and all the expenses to go out and tell a story, mm -hmm. and if it's a week-long shoot, and to come back and have the one drive or two drives that you have everything on fail, you're going to be very disappointed. And, and the amount of times that I've worked with students on workshops and in universities, and they've come back, they've shot everything, spent all, lots of time on these projects, lots of investment, and they've come back and their hard disk has gone. It's the only copy they've got. So yeah. backing up is really crucial because these things do die. And that there are various connections as well. So you can either use a USB 2 or USB 3, mm -hmm. or now a Thunderbolt if you're using a Macintosh. But well, mm -hmm. what are the difference between those two and, and which would you recommend? I mean, for, if I'm out in the field and just backing up, a lot of times I'm backing up overnight. So USB 3, 2 or 3 is fine. When I'm back in editing at home, you know, I use a Drobo, which basically is, you know, like a RAID for dummies. Right. You, know, you basically plug in and it's going to have duplicative copies within the Drobo, and that's Thunderbolt. And the nice thing is you can also edit on it because it's, it's fast enough that you can be editing source video that's on that external device. Right. So going with Thunderbolt or USB 3 is going to make a big difference for speed because we're dealing with big files here. Mm -hmm. The other thing to bear in mind is that when you buy your cards, that the, the SD or the CF cards that you buy need to be as fast as possible, right? Otherwise, you're going to go into, get into problems when you're shooting. Yeah, you don't want to skimp on your cards. You know, get, especially if you're going as big as a 32 gigabyte card, you want, you want the fastest and best one. If that's going to be storing most of your stuff, you know, don't go with the slower options. It's going to really struggle. Sure, and these can fail too. So you know, mm -hmm. don't just think once it's on the card, you need to back it up. Okay, so moving on from the hardware, let's talk a little bit about software. So for organizing your media assets and bringing them on, do you have an organization sort of workflow software or are you just using the Finder or the... Um, the, the organizational software that comes with the operating system. Yeah, for me personally, what I do is I go in the Finder and I transfer, you know, 
if I'm in a multicam shoot or, you know, I usually have other audio recorders. So I've got stuff in multiple places. I create a folder for every source. So each camera gets its own folder. Each audio device gets its own folder. Wherever the media is coming from, it gets its own folder. And then I use Pluralize um, and I pull all those different media assets, run a sync on them and keep a sync folder in that same place. And so that production day has all the different device assets and sure. a sync folder and then that gets backed up in multiple places so that day of shooting is now secure okay and um as well as that now for photographers we suggest that they're going to shoot raw files and they're going to need to then manage those raw files and edit those raw files so for editing do you have a preference for the way that you edit photographs or are you just going to again go with the finder and and put them on and bring them later into a edit software like photoshop or lightroom yeah, I usually bring it into Photoshop, but um, I've started playing around with Lightroom as well. I'm yeah. still uh, kind of in between what I've, uh, I've decided to be the most ideal for okay. photos. So there's lots of options for organizing your pictures, but you want to find some way of being able to flip through your pictures quickly, choose the ones that you want, and then bring them into the editing software, either Lightroom, or Photoshop, or Aperture. Those are the main ones, and mm -hmm. probably all have people who will swear by them but right. you know they have pros and cons now when it comes to video editing the choices are slightly uh, smaller right so what are the main choices in video editing so the big players right now um, I'd say for what we do and for our area the major two players right now are you know Adobe Premiere um, either CS6 or Creative Cloud um, and Final Cut X um, Avid does have a, a good section of the market in you know as far as high-end professional yeah. high-end professionals documentaries and some local news um, but for the most part for what the DSLR filmmaking you know sector it seems to be a lot of people using either Premiere or Final Cut X sure and these are two very different types of editing softwares mm -hmm. Final Cut X is very quick very works very well with DSLRs has lots of inbuilt things like you were talking about pluralize earlier on that's something that is built in a way of synchronizing the mm -hmm. audio and the video files if they're on separate media assets but it's not as 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 complex as it as premiere if you want to do something that's a bit longer or a bit more complicated and people have different preferences there are people mm -hmm. that will swear that Final Cut X is the worst thing, and others that, that will say, you know, I couldn't move out. I mean, I'm a Final Cut X user, you're a Premiere user. Yeah, I mean, I, I, this is a really interesting change because there was a while where everybody I, I knew was using Final Cut Pro, Final Cut 7. Um, and then when they moved to X, it was, you know, a complete shift in how you edit. Um, there were some initial problems at launch that, that they then fixed several months after, but it turned some people off who were used to timeline editing and some of the features that they were used to from Final Cut 7. So there was a shift to the people that are, were in the Premiere camp and then yeah. people that were in the Final Cut X camp, and you, you've got this pretty even divide between the two. Yeah. They're battling to, to lure each other back. But some things to consider is cost, because the Final Cut X is much cheaper than Premiere. However... If you go with Premiere, you can get a bundle where you get Photoshop and Premiere and a whole bunch of other media assets, uh, other software that you can use all together, right? So yeah. it's not so, just the one software. Yeah, so for Final Cut X, you're paying $300 up front um, and you're getting you know, this standalone software. Whereas you know, with Premiere in the Creative Cloud solution, they now do it's roughly a $50 a month for the entire suite or $20 a month just for Premiere. So if you don't want to do the upfront cost and just play at a monthly level, um, it's a different kind of payment plan, different kind of solution. At the end of the day though, these are just tools with preferences. You can tell great stories on either one and it's just what you know, is gonna suit your, your financial demands and the kind of things that you're trying to do. Okay, thank you very much, Matt. Mm -hmm. That's it for our equipment special. Uh, we've done four videos now for Connected Learning, and we hope that these videos are going to give you just some indication of things that you might consider to buy. Don't forget, for the course, you only need the essential kit. You don't have to have all the other bits that we've talked about, but you may want to move up to those at some point. It's also very important to say two things. One, we have not been sponsored by any of this, uh, any of the equipment that we've said. This is just our preferences. And these are the things that are in our bags. We didn't go to other people and get the other options. And there are lots of options out there. So we recommend that you go online, you research it, you look at all the potential options before you buy. And that's it. Thank you very much.